Yeah, so uh, this is through many ways that we, um, we can bring um, glory to God. Through using the abilities and talents and God has given you and to me to exhort him. To evangelize, evangelize the world and edify and encourage and equip others, believe, other believers. But what should we focus on in ministry? John focused on three things in ministry. First, the first thing that John focused on is pointing people to Christ, to Jesus Christ. When you read the passage, Luke chapter 3, verse 15, it says, the people were in expectation. This tells us right away that John was doing his job. He came to tell the, uh, them that Christ was coming. And they're expecting him to come. They are all looking for his arrival. And some of them, we, we read in Luke chapter 3, verse 15, began to wonder whether John was the Christ or not. But in Luke um, 16, John answered them all, I baptize you with the water, but the one more powerful than I will come, the thong of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Can I have slides, please? Uh, one of the secrets to John's success in ministry was that he knew what he was supposed to do. And that's all. And that's all that he did. He didn't try to do more than he was supposed to do. He knew what his job description was. He knew what his ministry limits were. When the people came to him and said, are you the Messiah? He says to them, no, I'm the one who baptizes you. I'm just the one who prepared the way for the Messiah. So John didn't look for praise for himself. He pointed people back to Christ. He told them that he only does what he does because Christ is coming. The people want to praise him, want to praise John, but he, he humbled himself and lift up Jesus. Yeah, later in his ministry, some of John's followers left him and went and followed Christ. Some people asked him, are you not jealous? Are you upset that your followers are going, to, uh, to, uh, are going after Christ? But John answered, the John answer was, Jesus must become greater. I must become less. So in John 3, uh, verse uh, 30, it says that John always wanted to get himself out of the picture and get Christ into the center. In our ministries, we must also point people to Christ. In our love for others and ministries we do, let us not try to replace Jesus. John ministry was preaching and he preached Christ. The apostles, Paul, the apostle Paul did the same thing. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 23 that he focused on preaching Christ. Even the Holy Spirit in John 16 we read that when the Holy Spirit comes he will glorify Christ and point people to Christ. And draw when um, 
and draw people to Christ in our ministries. And what we do, we need to do that. We need to focus on Christ. If we miss out Christ in our ministries, we have gone astray. Because all ministries that are biblical and all ministries that are Holy Spirit inspired, we lift up the name of Christ. Like John, please pray that through our ministries, Jesus would become greater and he would become less. We must point people to Christ. But secondly, we must remember that judgment is coming. When we read Luke chapter 3, verses 16 to 17, we read this. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fox is, is in his hand to clear his thresh, threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. These are not right, right stuff. These are really difficult stuff. The, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is sometime, something that happens to believers. Beginning at the Pentecost in Acts 2. But John doesn't focus on this that much. Instead, in John chapter 3, verse 17, he focuses on the fire. While fire sometimes is a symbol for hell, it is most often a symbol, a picture of temporal judgment while on this earth. The judgment seat of Christ. The picture John uses here is of threshing floor. Maybe briefly to understand this. To understand this, I will explain. On that day, grain was harvested and then piled on a threshing floor outside where the mighty where the might be a light cross breeze. The idea is to separate grain from chaff. After this process, the grain is kept safe, uh, but chaff is burnt. This kind of this is what uh, this this is kind of what John is talking about here with the chaff. This is coming. Um, uh, Jesus is coming with the Holy Spirit to separate the wheat from the chaff. The chaffs get blown away and then burned up. And this is exactly what Jesus accomplished in his ministry. His parables and miracles and teachings were often directed towards separating the wheat from the chaff. The wheat fell back to the ground and continued to, flow, uh, to follow him and listen to his, um, his teachings. But the chaff would get off offended or confused and would turn their backs on Jesus and get off and go off somewhere else. So John warning his ears that this separation is coming and we need to be warned. Remember that we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we must be ready to account for judgment because this is for you and for me and it is for everyone, everyone. But we do not need, uh, but what do we need to do? How do we need to make sure uh, uh, we are wheat, not chaff? If we have repented and now trust and believe in Jesus, we do not need to fear judgment because Jesus has accepted punishment in our place. We stand before the judgment seat clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. We have undeservedly become with because of Jesus Christ's death, death on the cross. But thirdly, are we prepared to share the difficult message? 
My friends, sometimes godly ministry is not always popular. When we read Luke chapter 3, verse 18 to 20, it says, And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod, the tetrarch, because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and all other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. Herod was renowned to be a crook leader. But the Baptist, uh, John the Baptist didn't think much of this. And so, being the bold preacher that John was, proclaimed that Herod was sinning against God, against his wife, against his brother, by doing such thing. So John preached that judgment was going to come, even upon Herod. Rulers and those in authority are not above the judgment of God. Well, this incensed Herod pride. And so he had, he had John arrested, put in prison, and eventually beheaded. Fast forward the event. While in prison, most of John's dis, uh, disciples left him and turned to follow somebody else. And finally, John is left all alone, wondering if his, his life is a waste, if he has pro proclaimed a false messiah. And while he's still in, in, um, through this process, processing with the whole situation, two soldiers come and cut his head off. This is not the way any of us want to conclude a ministry of God. But guess what? Even though by, world, by worldly standard or standards, John's life and ministry ended in failure. He died at about 30 years old, alone, in prison. But God's point of view is different. When we read Luke chapter 7, verse 28, Jesus says this, that among those born of women till up till that time, there was none greater than John. So you see, John's ministry focused on Christ. He pointed people to Christ rather than to himself. Therefore, today, remember this. If you say, I want to be used by God, I want to have ministry that is pleasing, pleasing to God, I want to be like John, pointing people to Christ, popularity and fame don't matter to me. I just want to, to do what God wants me to do. If that is how you feel, then follow closely as we finish up this morning by looking at Luke, chapter 3, verse 21 to 22, which shows us from the life of Christ how to prepare for ministry. So how to prepare for ministry? John chapter, uh, what, uh, verse 21 says this, when all people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too, and he was praying. Heaven was opened. This baptism of John, which Jesus goes through here, people who came to be baptized by John had to repent of personal sin in their life. This was not, to, this was not the case with Jesus himself. Jesus knew no sin. He had never sinned. He was not born of sin, as a sinner. He was sinless. So, why was Jesus getting baptized? Why was he getting baptized then? Because he was showing people that he was not going to, to support the religious Jewish corruption of that, of that day. He was going to be the perfect Jew. 
the way God intended the Jews to live. His life was not going to be a life of onward out hypocrisy, but of inner obedience to God. We read that those who came to be baptized by John publicly declared in front of entire crowd that when they entered the water, they were part of the corrupt Judaism. But when they came up, they came back up out of the water, they no longer identified with the corrupt way of doing things, but were now part of the new order of God, new creation would follow and obey him in righteousness and justice. Now, none of us can say that we are without sin. There is sin in the lives of every single one of us. And God wants us to to repent of this and turn from it, turn away from it and live for him. This is the first step in being used by God. Secondly, we must pray. In this passage, which says in verse 21b, it says this, and as he was praying, heaven was open. Only Luke's gospel tells us that Jesus prayed and as a result, the heaven was opened. Prayer is always the key which opens heaven's doors so that the blessings of God can pour down upon you and upon me. One of the reasons Jesus' ministry was so effective was because of the time and effort he put in prayer. Without prayer, it is difficult to imagine a good relationship with God. Prayer is the communication between you and God. I'm sure everyone here knows that. Jesus made prayer a priority in his own life. And as a result, the heavens were opened and he received a wonderful blessing, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. So as we finish with verse 22, which says, and the Holy Spirit descended upon bodily uh, descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. Jesus needed the Holy Spirit for effective ministry. After this, he's going to go and be tempted in the wilderness by Satan. But part of him being able to resist temptation was because the Holy Spirit was upon him. In fact, All that Jesus did was because the Holy Spirit was upon him. His miracles, his love for the unlovable, his powerful teaching, his patience and kindness. Jesus, though he was the Son of God, needed the Holy Spirit for effective ministry. And if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit upon him and at at work through him, how much more do we need Holy Spirit? How much more for us? Let us ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has regenerated you, indwelled you, baptized you, and sealed you. What you need to do, you and me, is to learn to submit to Him, to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. In other words, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The joy of allowing the Holy Spirit to fill us is great because the Holy Spirit offers so much more than we can imagine. Now, let us quickly go through some of the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is helper who teaches to remind, uh, who teaches and reminds. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. Uh, by the way, I've got I've got um, um, a number of papers which 
uh, describe about the, the work of the Holy Spirit so, so you can have this at the end of this service. So the Holy Spirit convicts the worlds of sin. The Holy Spirit dwells in believers and fills them. The Holy Spirit is a source of revelation, wisdom, and power. The Holy Spirit guides to all truth, including knowledge of what is to come. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts to believers. The Holy Spirit is a seal in the lives of believers. The Holy Spirit helps in the Christian's weakness and intercedes for them before God. The Holy Spirit makes believers new and gives them eternal life. The Holy Spirit sanctifies and enables believers to bear good fruit in their lives. So, as we, as we finish, and uh, please take time to go through those bullet points of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because without him, our life as Christians, we fail. We can't do nothing. Therefore, let us ask God to give us strength that we need to proclaim his good news of salvation, even if this might put us in difficulties. In difficulties. Let us spend time in his presence and partner with him, asking the Holy Spirit to fill us with his power. Because without him, we can do nothing. Amen.